Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch. Welcome to another episode in the Game Developer Toolbox. Today we are taking a look at something called Instant Meshes. Great news right up front, it is completely free. I like free, hopefully you like free. And the other thing is, it's powerful. It's amazingly powerful and it's kind of ironic because uh, there are tools out there that do the same thing that cost many, many, many times more. And it does it very well. And what that thing is, is retopology. If you watched, I did a uh, tutorial about Blender retopology just very recently. And if you want, I'll link it down below and you can see what the process is. But basically it's when you take a really high detailed mesh and make a lower res version of it. And the manual process of going through retopology is kind of a pain in the butt. But most tools do a terrible, terrible job at it. So that's where Instant Meshes come in. Instant Meshes is available as a free product. It's on GitHub with source code. You can get it at github.com forward slash WK, I'm sorry, WJAKOB forward slash instant dash message. I'll also, uh, I'll link that in the, uh, in the comment section as well. Um, but um, completely free project, very powerful, very cool project. Now I do warn you, I have a fairly new, fairly meaty computer and this thing is going to trash it. So I will put this up here and over here for our amusement, I shall snap Task Manager so you can see what's going on as we do it. So this is a, a potent, potent application and it's going to require a lot of processing power because it's doing something uh, quite difficult, frankly. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Now, first thing we're going to need is a very high detailed mesh. And I have one right here in Blender. You can see right here, if you can ask me what that is, I have no idea, but what it is, is 3.1 million triangles. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want a lot of mesh detail. We want to have an organic shape, which is something that things traditionally struggle with a bit. And now we're going to throw this at instant meshes and see how it does. Now you export it as an OBJ file. OBJ is an old um, alias waveform format. It's very simple. Pretty much every single modeling application ever made supports it. And you simply import your uh, object like so. Now a bit of a warning. This guy is, uh, let's see, it's on the desktop. It is 189 megabytes in size, that file. So we're gonna give uh, Instant Meshes a little bit of time to process this guy. Um, so we are dealing with the very large data sets here. Now let me get the task manager back up. So this is not going to be, uh, by any definition of the word, fast. And you see it's chugging away right there. It's actually not doing too, too bad right now on the, the process used. But we will see that RAM number continue to rise slowly, especially once we start doing things. But basically right now, it's loading this very large mesh data. I'll throw it on pause for a sec, so we don't have to wait. It shouldn't be much more. Okay, about 12 seconds later, it started kicking off this process, and there is our uh, high resolution model. We can use the left cursor to, to rotate, oh, sorry, left uh, mouse button to rotate around and see the topology. But that is a lot of triangles. And now what we wanna do is just reduce it down. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. There's a number of options. I'm gonna stick with the exact simplest option we can possibly take. That is, we wanna remesh it as quads. Uh, quads give you a nicer edge flow um, and very key. If you're gonna be doing any modeling on it after the fact, you're gonna to wanna to work in quads. Now, when you export out to your game engine, when you're finally done, you'll probably export it out as triangles or the quads will automatically be turned into triangles. But when you're modeling, when you want nice smooth lines, you definitely wanna work with quads. So that's why this is important. There's two different settings. Uh, we'll go with four rosy, four posy. No idea what that means, but it sounded good and four is bigger than two. So obviously that's a good setting. And now what you want to do is just tell it how many um, vertices we want it to try and aim for. And we'll be ambitious with this one. Let's get it down to about 15,000. So we're going to go from 3 million to 15,000 here. And now we just kind of let it solve. So first it's going to solve the orientation. So this is the flow of the surface and then the positions. So first it's going to solve the flow. And as you'll see, we are wailing on my computer at this point. But that was nice and quick. So this is your general surface flow that the... Uh, the topology is going to try and follow. And now we're gonna say position field. And there is generally, it's, it's still working. You can see the progress bar over here. But this is essentially the position of all of the new faces and vertices that it's creating for us. And done. So now it has taken our high definition mesh. Uh, let's go down, we'll do a smooth run on it. 
pure quads if we actually I'll turn that off because we can have some triangles that's fine and extract our mesh out so there we now have our mesh so since I didn't do pure quads we're gonna have a few seams and corners and the key is you're gonna have that no matter what you do on a retopology so what you're gonna want to do later on is make sure that those are in the nice places in the proper creases etc I'm gonna show you something in a second back in instant meshes but first I want to take this guy out and show you the end result so now let's just save that guy out and we'll call this out dot obj and now if I go back to our desktop so there's our in source 189 megabytes our output 1.72 megabytes so you can have an idea of the amount of detail it's taken away and now let me just fire up blender again all right and import obj desktop out that's oh Edit mode, smooth everything, and done. And there you go. We are now dealing with uh, 31,000 triangles as opposed to, or 15,000 faces as opposed to our original source, which was 3.1 million. And let's throw these two side by side so you can get a comparison to how well they did. So there is one. There is the other. Pretty damn good. Now let's throw on, uh, let's see the mesh in action. It's up here on the wireframe. And you'll see there's, there's some ugliness. So we've got, you know, this is not ideal. This is a corner you'd want to hide, or you might want to do a little bit of cleanup, or uh, you might want to come in here. Oh, actually, that was an artifact. So even then, it's actually really clean. You've got these corners. Uh, so here you got like a five point mesh. That's not ideal. Uh, but for the most part, you've got a nice clean topology, nice um, smooth flow. But if you've got these things sometimes, so what you may want to do is turn this, for example, oops, into that. Or your cleanup, you're going to need to do a little bit of cleanup still, but really, we took a 3 million polygon mesh. It made a damn good, damn clean, lower polygon approximately of it. And if we head on back, so now we don't actually need either of these. There's actually a fair level of control you've got over um, this guy, how this is actually generated, how this mesh is generated. We'll go back out of here. So I think I just closed that down. Yep. So now instead of the this approach, say, if we wanted to have um, this flow be a little bit different, we can actually use this comb guy and change the orientation. So this will change the direction in which um, the surface flows. Now, I need to figure out how to get that map back up. There we go. So here you see the lines on here. Oops, I just drew another line, didn't mean to. So we're gonna make a really weird surface here. But what I'm doing, I'll edit that, is let's say, here I'll turn my comb off so I can rotate. Let's say we don't like this flow right here. We don't want the surface to flow around this way. We want it instead go this way. So we don't want the topology solved this way. We just kind of come in here. And instead of this flow, we're gonna now go that way. And then the tools is gonna sit there and go, oh, okay, that's the flow you want. And adjust it for us. So very, 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 very cool stuff at work here. Now when you're done, and when you've finished everything you do, you do a solve, and it will come through and figure things out as best as possible. Now the same thing is when you're starting to deal with the geometry, I don't know how to actually force a draw to that. So this is uh, orientation. These colors are showing the orientation of the surface. And then uh, position field should show, oh, here we go. So maybe I have to generate before I can draw it. This is the topology. So this is sort of a preview of the geometry you're going to be creating. And we can also, once it's finished solving, we can change and modify how it's actually being shown. Um, it's going to show the singularity. Singularities are basically the points where the flow is bad. Um, and you can modify and move them around. Or we can just change the topology completely. I will show you this in a second once it's done. So, okay, it's done solving. 
Uh, for example, let me turn this pen off. Let's find a spot we don't like. All right, let's say we didn't want this break to happen here. So we want this guy to instead continue up to here. I can just come in here, grab this flow and say, all right, no, you go over here instead like that. And then we'll just let it figure things out and it'll redirect the topology to match the flow or the surface we want. So if you needed to move um, in, in behind the crevice of an ear or just you move the, the bad seams to places where you don't want them to be, you can just do that. And then the algorithm at work here will figure out the best mesh for you. Very powerful tool. Um, I've actually played, I put this comedically low and I still got some really nice results out. Again, you're still going to have a little bit of cleanup by hand when you're done. You're going to want to play around with the settings a bit. I come in here, you've got your advanced, you can set um, it to display a number of different things such as uh, your brush strokes, your output mesh, etc. Um, there are some settings I do not understand at all. Um, you can change the uh, sharpness, which will result in a reload as well. Uh, I never got either of these functions to work, so they may actually be disabled. But even if you just grab your high def mesh, you import it here, you set it to quads, you solve, you solve, and you export, you literally just shrunk your mesh down in a way that's actually still usable. Now again, a warning, you will want a beefy machine with a lot of RAM to be using this guy. But this is a completely free tool that does something very awesome. Um, so once again, that is um, Instant Meshes, and it's available on GitHub, and I will link it down below. Absolutely free. Uh, works in OBJ format, which means it will pretty much work with every single modeling application ever released. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later.